and they're asking how do they help explain law of conservation of mass of constant composition and of definite proportions okay so for this one question i'm actually going to just look at the solution because i really don't want to repeat myself in terms of uh looking at uh, explaining dalton's atomic theory and then um uh, talking about law of conservation of mass, constant composition, and definite proportions for the sake of time. I'm just going to double check that they have uh, the the um, the they explain the law uh, the concept correctly. And as you can see, it's a very very big paragraph, so I'm going to try I'm going to try to skim it for you. So it's asking, let's see, uh, main ideas of Dalton's atomic theory are elements are composed of small indestructible particles named atoms. That's good. Every atom of a particular element has the same mass as the mass of other atoms of the element and their mass is distinguished from atoms of other elements. A compound is formed when atoms form when atoms combine in simple whole number ratios. So that's the law of definite proportions here. That's good. Um, the law of conservation mass of constant composition and of definite proportions can be explained on the basis of the Dalton's atomic theory because the matter is composed of atoms. So this here is our explanation. So it's saying, according to the law of conservation of mass, mass is neither created or nor destroyed, distorted in a chemical reaction that remains unchanged, right? Therefore, the sum of mass of reactant and the sum of masses of the product will be the same. Good. So that's how they, uh, the, the law of conservation is that is exactly that. So this law can, um, can be explained as all atoms of elements have the same mass and no atom of an, uh, and any element is converting into another element during the reaction, then the mass will be conserved in a reaction. That's good. I can simply just use, um, I'm going to use an example here. I'm going to say, um, I have H2 gas plus O2 gas yields water, right? So again, very, very easy. And as you can see here, I have, I have two hydrogens here and two oxygens here. Um, and then in the, on the product side, I have two hydrogens and only one oxygen. So in this case, this actually doesn't follow the uh, law of conservation of mass, right? I have one more oxygen here, right? That doesn't make sense. It means I have to balance my chemical equation, right? So in this case, this would be two. I need a two here to make two, uh, two, two oxygens and two hydrogens, right? Two oxygens and two hydrogens. And now, uh, or sorry, this is here, this here is four, four hydrogens here. And if I have four hydrogens here, I'm going to need another four here, right? Which means two times two makes four, which means this here is now balanced, right? Four, I have four hydrogens like so. So this here now follows my law of conservation mass, right? So we have to balance our chemical equations. That's good. And then they're saying, according to the law of uh, co definite proportion, the mass ratio of constituents of the compound will remain the same in all samples of the compound. That's good. So if I have a sample of water, I, a one, uh, one molecule of water does not weigh differently than the... Uh, uh, does not weigh the same or does not it has a mass ratio that's constant. Right? It's always two hydrogens with one oxygen. That's the law of definite proportions. That's good. And it says, according to the law of multiple proportions, if two different compounds are made up of the same elements and the mass of that first element that combined with of the second element can be expressed as a ratio of a whole number, right? And that's what we're doing in this case here. If I have two elements, uh, two elements to fo form one element here, the exactly the mo the masses of them are the same, right? Because I have two again, four hydrogens here, four hydrogens here, two oxygens and two oxygens here, and when two different elements combine to form different compounds, the masses of one element with the constant mass of another element in different compounds are always related to each other as a whole number. So again, four and four, two and two. This could be only possible if the matter consists of atoms. So long-winded solution, but um, solution is correct. Uh, wish to see better formatting, <laughs> better formatting.